Hey guys, welcome back to Beastmaster Hunting. I'm your host, Nick Atkinson. This is typically where you'd hear me say something like we're headed back to West Texas or we're out in West Texas or we're here in Central Texas. But this uh, month is a little bit different. We are in Alaska on a brown bear hunt. Check that out. Weather's awesome today. We're ready to get out there. We're gonna hang out for a few days at Talark Creek Lodge with Bushwhack Alaska Hunting. And we're gonna head back on these mountains back behind us hunt some bears so stick around it's gonna be awesome so we've been traveling for two whole days I don't know how many planes three planes big planes small planes we're finally here on Lake Iliamna in Alaska with Eric Salatan the owner of Bushwhack Alaska and Eric we're ready to go hunt hey we're here on the Alaska Peninsula it's October big brown bear time we're gonna get you out uh, we're ready to go awesome welcome you're gonna put us with one of your best guides right Oh, you know, every guide's the best guide. They're all prettier than I am, so they have that going for them. <laughs> we have my wife, Shauna, with us, so I'm not sure she'll, you know, will she appreciate the beauty of the guides? Uh, you know, if she appreciates your beauty, I'm sure she'll <laughs> like that just fine. <laughs> all right, fair enough. My name's Eric Salatan. I've been guiding for 19 years. Uh, I've been a registered guide here in Alaska since 2008. I live here in rural Alaska with my wife Martha May. Uh, we own two lodges here, the Tulare Creek Lodge here on the Alaska Peninsula, and uh, we own an additional lodge up in the Brooks Range in the Arctic of Alaska. Here at the Tulare Creek Lodge we do uh, brown bear hunting and we also do sport fishing in the summer. Up in the Brooks Range we do dull sheep, moose, caribou, grizzly bear, and black bear as well up there. Uh, we're very blessed, we have a great life, we get to meet people from all over the world and share Alaska with them. And I love to talk hunting, so you call me anytime, 907-388-8766 or bushwhackalaska.com or tolericcreeklodge.com. All right, so we've been stranded, stranded in the lodge for a few days, eating delicious food. However, we're on our way to the airport to try and get off the ground to go hunting. So we're going to go meet up with Luke, the pilot, and uh, see if we can get out there to a... Uh, Base camp or spike camp? Oh, spike camp. We're, we're going to go out to spike camp. What are, our, what are our odds here, Eric? You know, it's, uh, it's all a matter of safety. The, everything here in Alaska is just, you're at the mercy of the weather. And Luke, unfortunately, has the great judgment to know when to go and when to hold. And he'll go out and give it his darndest. And if he thinks it's too rough, he'll come back and eat some more delicious food. <laughs> all right. We'll see. My name is Luke Tyrell, and I was born and raised in Alaska, flying and guiding across the state. And um, that's what we're going to be doing here today. My favorite part about being a bush pilot is probably just getting to see different areas of the state and explore and experience the beauty and the different systems that our giant state has to offer and just see cool places and find places to land and hunt. This is a Piper PA-12. It's a 1947 model. It's been recently refurbished, highly modified for bush work. Um, it's got big tires on it for landing in, in rough terrain. Um, oversized engine, try to keep the uh, power to weight ratio. Sorry. You good. Strong. Flat pitch prop, which is basically like being in first gear in a in a bicycle all the time. It's great for going up hills, but it's not good for cruising. Um, got big barn door flaps. You can get nice and slow and descend over trees and terrain. Big rubber in the back is important. Try to keep your tail up out of the sand and mud. And um, beyond that, it's just take out everything you don't need and try to keep it as light as possible. And then uh, Keep the greasy side down. <laughs> I like it. What do you think, Rick? Rick, the camera ready. guy. I think I'm ready. I think you're ready. I think I'm ready. I think we're going out. Maybe we can land. Maybe we can't. Luke is a fearless but careful pilot. Fearless is not a term we like. Fearless and careful. <laughs> Carefully fearless. So. We'll see. Hope we can get landed and get on something.
had a really good flight over. Uh, we're flying in Luke's plane, and we met up with our guide, Wes. That's Luke's brother. And uh, the flight across the mountains was spectacular. There's lakes everywhere. There's animals everywhere. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty awesome flight when you're only 1,000 feet over the ground. And we're just going to sit out here on the beach, and we're going to glass these mountains back behind us. We're, when the low tide is down, we're going to glass this beach right here. Uh, we're going to glass the mountains back that way. So we got to be real quiet. Just sit out here, be patient, wait for a big one to come in. And then uh, once we spot him, we'll put a good stock on him and hopefully get him. There's been two nine to nine and a half foot uh, blonde colored brown bears that our guide Wes has seen in this area in the last week. So we're going to hopefully hold out for one of those. But the weather has been so bad that uh, it's probably going to be the first good bear we get will be the first bear we get. <laughs> so let's go check out camp and meet Wes. My name is Wesley Tyrell. I'm a hunting guide. I guide in Alaska, all over the state, and Australia. And I've been doing it. I got my license when I was 18, so I've been doing it for seven years. I started my apprenticeship when I was 15, 10 years ago, and pretty much been doing it ever since. I think my favorite part about guiding is uh, how excited the hunters get when you get close to the animals. As I, I still get excited whenever we get close to bears or big moose, anything, but I don't think I get as excited because I've been doing it for a while and uh, after a while it kind of just becomes another animal that you're harvesting but when you see a hunter take their first one they're more excited about it and that yeah it's a good feeling <laughs> We woke up uh, day one of our hunt, day one that we can hunt, since we were in the air yesterday, we couldn't hunt, can't fly and hunt on the same day. And it's about 40 degrees, windy and rainy. So we're getting our packs loaded up and all of our waterproof gear on. And we're gonna go out in the rain. I'm excited, can't you tell? One of the biggest or one of the hardest things about the hunts in the peninsula is just dealing with the weather. It's constant wind, constant rain, and the terrain isn't easy either. It's always up and down, big cuts, deep cuts full of alders with streams through them that you've got to cross. And as you're going through them, you can't see the bears until you pop out the other side and relocate them. That's one of the most difficult parts. So we just got back to our tent after hiking around uh, day one. Lots of rain, lots of wind, like 50 mile an hour wind, up and down canyons and hills and crossing streams and rivers. And we're right on the beach here, so we get a lot of really strong wind. This is all of our stuff hanging up drying right now. Our rain jackets are pretty soaked. Uh, so we're gonna eat something, maybe check the beach time or two and hope for better weather tomorrow.
So, it's day, I don't know, it's all riding together, three or four of the hunt. And we've hiked from the coast all the way over there. partner saw a bear run up the river but we couldn't find him so we're trying to find a good spot to get on this hillside so we can see down this valley find a bear we hiked a couple miles up from the beach it's high tide now so there's no reason to be down there and now we found a good spot where we got a good vantage point of the creek and the river bottom and the hillsides got a nice tree to hide behind to stay out of the wind just gotta hope that one stumbles into our view. Wes, if you were gonna describe bear hunting to people, how would you describe it? I would say that it's hours of misery and boredom with, uh, you know, maybe a half hour of pure adrenaline. Here's how I would describe it it's cloudy outside. <laughs> It's sunny outside. <laughs> it's raining outside. Yeah, that's pretty good too. <laughs> you forgot to wander around in circles though to stay awake. <laughs> <sighs> that's all. Well, we gave our best up here today. We saw a wolf. Uh, sow and a couple cubs up on the hill. Now we're gonna go take a look down by the beach before dark. Head back to camp, eat some food. Yeah. Okay, so we're down on the beach. We've been watching the beach for the last like three hours. Wes spotted a big blonde bear up on top of the hill. So we're gonna haul ass because we only have like two hours of daylight and try and get within a couple hundred yards of him and get a shot on him. It's a big bear. And there he is. Touch, touch and hold the center of the screen for me. So we just came up 900 feet in elevation over two hours through the worst terrain I've ever hiked. It's probably the most dangerous thing I've ever done in my life. Wes does it on a daily basis. Um, and the bear was gone. So, I mean, there's nothing left to say. <laughs> so disappointing. Now we gotta go back down in the dark about a mile if we walk or if we flew in a straight line to base camp it's a mile spike camp that little tree on the ridge
So it's the morning of day five or six of the hunt, and we're sitting out over this valley. See it out here? Uh, looking for a bear to come down the creek. And in true Beastmaster fashion, we called in two coyotes. Um, and I shot him right down here on the creek bed. We're waiting to make sure that the second one is dead. It wasn't a very solid hit. The first one's folded like a lawn chair. Um, so we're going to go down. We're going to take a look at those. They're at about, the first shots were about 220. And then the shots where I put them down were 200. So, good times. We hiked down to the, uh, the creek here where the coyotes were running along. This is the coyote that went down immediately. Uh, the second coyote ran down this way a little ways and stopped. And I hit him with what looked like was a really good lung shot. He spun and spun and spun. We found chunks of meat and fur. And he went into these thick alders. You can see uh, all this thick stuff. And we've looked for him for about an hour now. And uh, just we can't locate him. He, it's too thick. You can't blood track him through there. Um, but this guy out here, not so lucky. Take a look there. Solid shot. Spined him. I was trying to, uh, I was trying to hit them both in one shot. They were kind of lined up. So I aimed a little bit high on this one, higher than I would have. I guess the bullet hit the spine and probably exploded. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Um, and that's probably what kept me from getting a double. I probably would have got a double if I had just aimed it looked center like and it would have I thought you were going to get a double on it. Yeah. Definitely got the bullets for it when we're loaded for bears. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Wes is going to be an awesome guide and skin this guy out even though he's blown up. And we're going to see how how bad that fur is missed. I mean, it's it's got a big hole in it, but hopefully it's just split and not blown up. So, we're going to see if we can salvage some fur out of this one. And then we're going to get back up on the hill and watch the ravens. The ravens are starting to circle. So we're hoping that the ravens will take us to the other uh, coyote. We just got to figure out a way to get through all these alders. You can see them behind me. They're super thick. And there's just no walking through them. So it's it's really, you got to kind of, if we saw him in there, I think I'd probably have to give Wes, a, give Wes a boost and just throw him into the middle. And then we'd work on how, get, how to get him out after that. So... We're gonna go uh, do some more glassing after we collect this fur. It's the morning of day seven, and it is freezing cold out here. Uh, got a north wind today, all last night. It's nice and clear out, but it got down probably in the teens last night. And right now we're, I don't know, somewhere in the mid 20s, but the wind chill is supposed to be nine. Uh, I'm up on this point just trying to stay out of the wind because we got like a 25 mile an hour wind today um, and it's so cold that my boots are freezing uh, it's pulling all the moisture out of my boots they're waterproof boots but they're leather and it's pulling all the moisture out of my boots and freezing them and I keep chipping it off but it keeps refreezing let me see if I can give you a look here I'm not sure if you'll be able to see see the the frost on my boots and my gaiters oh sorry and my gaiters are uh, freezing over too because they have a little bit of moisture in them so three more days after today of bear hunting the only good bear that we've had a shot at was that big blondie bear that we went up at the hill after and uh, he disappeared just right as I was trying to get a shot on a cliffside. We were literally on a, 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 a cliff face. It was so steep there was no vegetation even, and uh, it was a 400. It would have been a 400-yard shot. And right as we got him ranged, and Wes uh, moved over a little bit so I could get in a good position, he disappeared over this crest. We hiked all the way up to the top to see if maybe we could see him on the way back down, but it was too dark. So we had to come down in the dark, and it took us about 
two and a half hours to get down, maybe three hours. We got back to camp at about 11. And uh, it was as brutal going down as it was going up. Going down, you know, in the dark with a headlight carrying a pack and a gun is pretty tough. Um, going up, we did go up some steeper stuff that was like straight cliff. And uh, that was pretty sketchy. But that was the only shot I've had. That's the only bear that we've seen uh, that I could have shot because everything else we've seen has had a sow and cubs or has been a sow with cubs. You're not allowed to shoot sows when they have cubs, which obviously we, we wouldn't want to anyway. So hoping for another boar today or just a great big sow with no cubs and uh, going to try and stay warm. Wes and I are out here in the snow. Get a little frigid out here. A little bit cold. You can see the uh, snowflakes falling nice and soft like in some kind of Christmas story or some shit. Um, but if you look that way, yeah, there's supposed to be an island out there. And you can't see it. So, the snow's about to get serious. Day nine, no bears. Told y'all it was snowing earlier. Now it's really snowing. <laughs> we found this awesome spruce tree to get under, eat our lunch. But uh, pretty much zero visibility, so not much hunting to be had until it clears up. Hopefully that's soon. It's day ten. Last day to hunt bears. It's the last day of the season. Uh, don't have a whole lot of video the last few days because it's just down to me and Wes. It got so cold we lost everybody else. They all headed back. Um, Rick, the camera guy, got a decent little bear off camera, unfortunately, because we had to split up. But uh, he got it uh, two or three days ago, and he had it back after that. Um, so Wes and I have been hunting real hard. I mean, we've crossed, I can't tell you how many creeks and streams and rivers, hiked up and down hills in the snow. We got a ton of snow on the ground right now. As you can see, we got about an inch yesterday. Um, crossed valleys. We did like nine miles one day, uh, with several thousand feet elevation change. We went after that big blonde bear. We haven't seen him again. Um, Wes has a little bit of footage of the same bear from the beach. I'll try and get it and put it in. And uh, we're just holding out hope that here in the last uh, about nine hours we have to hunt, we find something. So maybe we'll run across another coyote at least. We'll see what happens. Well, that's it. It's day 11 of our camping trip <laughs> slash bear hunt. We hunted to, uh, till the end of the season for 10 days. Uh, season ended yesterday. We saw one legal bear, um, the one up on the hill, the big one. And uh, we could put a good stock on him, just couldn't get to him before dark, and he just disappeared over the hill. But uh, got to spend a lot, of, a lot of good time out here in Alaska. Shot a total of three coyotes um, Rick the camera guy got his bear and uh, we're just standing here on the low tide waiting for the plane to show up so kind of a bummer but good experience and uh, we got to test some test some gear out make sure it worked uh, for the next big hunt so stay tuned I have a feeling the next episode will be Plenty of coyotes and pigs getting shot again in Texas. Back to true to form. Uh, check out BeastmasterHunting.com. And thanks to Bushwhack Alaska. Check them out. And uh, if you're looking to head up to Alaska, they have a top-notch crew. So, see y'all next time.